Hey, welcome to Transform Your Workplace. I'm Brandon Laws, your host as always. Hey, today I want to do something a little different. I want to create a series called Inside Zenium where I basically describe some of the things that we've done internally, experimented with, have tried, maybe it's failed, or maybe we've had success with it, where I'm just going to give you all the information, tell you how we did it, and uh, there's several things I can talk about over time. We've experimented with a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, as an HR consulting company who tries to, to be as innovative as we possibly can, we try a lot of things for ourselves. And then we uh, advise our clients as to whether or not they should do it and how to do it. And one of those things I want to start out today by talking about how we launched a book club. I get this question a lot, which is why I decided to do a podcast on it. And and by the way, I have no guests today. It's just me, which I, this is a, kind of the first time I've ever done this besides just a basic announcement. So I apologize. You're only going to hear my voice for today's episode. <laughs> and I'd be curious to hear what you think about it. So when we look at, we step back and we say, we wanted a book club. Well, why do we want a book club? What was the point of it? And actually this idea came, I think, I believe 2012, our vice president of HR at the time, Tana Thompson, she came up with this idea. And I, I don't know where she got the idea from. Maybe she, she'd she work with some, some clients who had, had done a book club. And she brought it back to the team and said, hey, we need to start a book club. We need to do it. And I, I read a ton personally. And I said, I'll do this. And that, this is at a time where I, I was grabbing onto basically anything I, extra I can get my hands on just um, just to be involved. I had a lot more time then. And so I said, hey, I'll lead this. If you need a leader, I'll, I'll do it. And one thing I've learned is that with anything like this where you're launching something new, you absolutely have to have an owner for it. And for me, you know, I, I'm pretty isolated in my marketing role. And so I really felt like I needed to get um, ownership of, of something that was outside of my role so I can have influence on other people. And I think, you know, sidebar, I think it's a good leader opportunity for a lot of people who don't really have a leadership type of role. So for, for me, I, at the time, don't believe I was in a leadership role. I don't think I managed anybody, but I wanted influence over the organization. I wanted people to hear my voice. I wanted to... I wanted to make sure that people knew I was involved and to hopefully inspire people too. And I think why we started the book club, I think you need to have a why behind anything that you do. You don't just start something just to start it. For us, we wanted to create a learning organization. We want we wanted to grow and develop. So we we would select books that were business, HR, leadership, communication related, any anything along that spectrum. I remember at one point, because we would give people credit for our wellness program by participating in a book club or reading a book. And, you know, for this, we needed to make sure that there was a dual purpose, like their, their growth and development was a part of this, but also they could do something and learn something that actually would make them better at their jobs. And so it was kind of a win-win from that perspective. And so we, we wanted to make sure that we we only picked books and topics that aligned really well with our business. So that was kind of where we started from like, how do we want to run this book club? Because we're not going to do a fiction-based book club, for example, and talk about sci-fi books that just didn't align well. I think you could do that and just, just to get people more involved. So I think that's the other purpose is what I'd say. Like the why behind it was growth and development on one side of the spectrum. On the other side of the spectrum was getting people to communicate cross department. This is at a time where, so when I started back in 2008, we were 25 employees about. And to, you know, as of today, we're about 90 employees and we have probably eight jobs posted. So we're going to be 100 employees at some point soon in the near future. And as you grow in that size, there it comes a point where you're no longer friends with everybody. I mean, anybody who's in like a 20 person, 25 person group, you kind of understand what I mean by that. It's it, you're so small to where you know everybody really intimately. You talk with everybody on a regular basis. Uh, you feel like you really know them. But when you get to a certain point in your growth, 
and I felt this over the years is you get bigger, you become more siloed in your departments. And I felt like, uh, and why I was passionate behind creating a book club was because we needed more opportunities for other people across departments to interact with each other. We just didn't really have that. We had an all team meeting and we have some activities once in a while, but we don't have something on a regular cadence that would give people an opportunity to just talk with one another. And I'll tell you like over time, uh, and I'll get into the logistics of how we run this, but there was such an evolution behind what these book clubs really meant. Yes, we talked about the books. Yes, we talked about how it applied to the business. But you'd be surprised, like people would stay like an hour after and we'd be just talking about whatever. And how many opportunities can you get to have a situation where people in one department, like let's say a payroll department and somebody in sales or marketing where they get to interact and they they actually willingly talk with one another for an, an hour plus outside of what the regular scheduled thing was. So that's what I'd say like the why behind it for us was dual purpose development and cross department collaboration. So if you're thinking about starting a book club and maybe this inspired you to start one just by those two whys, I think you need to figure out your why before you, before you dive in. The other thing, now I want to get into the logistics. Okay. You have to make sure you have an owner for the book club or any task force for that matter. You have to have somebody who's probably a regular, a constant, somebody who's going to own it and make sure that month after month or, you know, if it's every other month, you're going to do it over and over again. So I would say before you start, you need to do it that way. You also have to figure out as a company, what, what do you want to contribute? Is it time? Is it money? Meaning, are you buying all the books for all the people? Are are they allowed to be on the clock? Like if they're hourly employees, are they allowed to be on the clock while they participate in the book club? Because I'll tell you with Zenium, it wasn't even a question. It, and the reason why we have so much participation is Zenium buys the books. If we do a morning coffee meeting, Zenium buys the coffees for everybody. And I'm talking like individualized Starbucks coffees too. Like we, we do it the right way. And same with like if we do an afternoon happy hour, we're buying the wine and the beer and snacks and all that stuff to make sure people have a good time and that it's, it's a worthwhile um, get together. It's much beyond just reading the book and having a discussion around it. It's really, it should be an experience and Zenium's allowed that. So there's no barriers. At this point, we're removing all the excuses as to why you wouldn't participate in the book club. Like literally, you get a free book, you get time with your friends and coworkers, and you get to learn, and you get some free drinks or Starbucks as a result of it. So I'd say that you need to figure out as a company, what do you want to contribute? I rec- if, if it's my choice, I recommend doing it the way we do it, which is 100% paid for and time on the clock. Meaning they can move away, like they can carve out an hour of their work day to go participate in this because it's for their development and for cross department collaboration. Okay. So once you do that, you've got an owner, you've figured out how you're going to contribute. Then it becomes communication. How do you want to do the signups? How do you want to do it? So you could just have some like a, a group where you sign up once and you're just part of the group and then people can elect in uh, when they have time. How I do it and how Zenium does it, uh, because I've been doing it the same way for five plus years and I'm sure there's a better way. So, you know, I would love to hear from you if you, if you think I should do it differently. Uh, but it has worked. I, every couple of months, so like I'll, I'll pick a book sometimes based on consensus, sometimes I'll do a poll, sometimes I'll just choose one. And I'll pick a book, I'll do an email out to the entire organization, and I'll put like a Google form sign up sheet. And so I'll, I'll basically ask three questions. What's your name? Do you want to sign up? And what format of the book do you want? So then it go it populates into a spreadsheet where then I order all the books all in one from Amazon. 
I'll order in bulk. I'll also give people a chance to order Kindle if they want. So then I could just email them the Kindle version immediately and I'll just buy that and then it'll be emailed to them. So essentially the way I'm setting it up is that it's, it's literally an opt-in every single time. We don't have, yes, we have people that participate over and over and over again. So they're sort of the just perpetually part of this club, this book group, but it truly is opt-in every single book. And I usually do a book once every, I try to give people 45 days to read it. So I, I usually do about every two to three months, I'll do one book. So we'll, we'll definitely read four to five books in one, one year, one calendar year. The other logistics uh, that, and I can actually post frequently asked questions that I have and in some of the rules behind it. But I basically say like, if you don't show up for a discussion and you get a free book, if you skip twice, basically you're kind of kicked out of the group or you just have to buy your own book. So there is a stick involved. I don't know if that's the right approach. I've never had to call anybody out on it. People are really good about showing up and, it, and things do happen by the way. The other thing I wanted to mention just logistically. So the time of day does matter. People are busy at certain points of the day. I used to do them all in the morning and this is early on. Uh, and I would, like I'd mentioned the Starbucks thing. I would literally go to, I would take everybody's order. And this is back when we had like maybe 10 people show up. So I'd take everybody's order. I'd go to Starbucks in the morning and literally get 10 to 15 coffees for in everybody. A lot of work on my end. Plus I did them before work started for most people. So 7:30 in the morning and we get together in a conference room. What I found though, and why I don't do mornings anymore, as at least before work, is that some people would just not show up. And so then I'd have like a customized Starbucks that I went to the trouble of getting and then people just wouldn't show up. And th that wasn't like all the time, but there inevitably for every meeting, there'd be one or two that just wouldn't show. So I moved to... And similarly, I probably wouldn't do a lunchtime either because there's always excuses. Oh, there's, I'm too busy. I've got to keep working, uh, but it's totally up to you. I moved to a complete happy hour thing. It's easier to manage. It's the end of the day. So by the time 3.30 or 4 o'clock rolls around, people are ready to just call it quits. And, and that way you're not breaking up their day either. You, you, they do their work and then now they get to look forward to something that involves some wine and some beer. So that, that's kind of the way we do it. But again, choose something, stay consistent with it, okay? Because people will expect it at some point. And I do Tuesdays usually at 3.30. That is the time of day and weekday that I do it. And um, yeah, so that's that's what I do. Okay, so by the time the sign up goes out, people have signed up. I do give people a deadline. I'll say I'm ordering books on X date. I will put in a, a giant order. Usually we get like 25 people signing up. So I'll order like 25 hardback or paperback books. Prime, they get here in two days. I'll distribute the books. Once I distribute the books, I will send out a calendar invite for a date of my choice, usually 45 days out. Meaning I want to give people at least a month and a half-ish to read the book not everybody reads fast. Not everybody has the time. I, I, I totally get that. So I usually always go 45 days or more out. If it was my, <laughs> if it was my way, I'd probably do a book every three weeks, but that's just not possible for a lot of people. So once the day shows up and oh, by the way, communication is really key in this. So just like with it, hopefully you read the book, uh, or the read the, or listen to the podcast meetings suck with Cameron Harold take a page from from that particular podcast or that book where he describes the the meeting the agenda so when i'm communicating out with people with the event date the discussion date i always in the body of it say what's the purpose what are we going to cover what are your responsibilities before you show up so a lot of people get they get anxious about oh gosh do i have to talk i mean it truly is a discussion but even if you didn't finish the entire book, I still want you to show up. And I, I write that in the body of it. And I say, here's what you need to do. You need to read the book. I mean, ideally. And ideally, you come with a couple of discussion points. And 
there will be snacks, there will be drinks, and here's what to expect. So I put all that out there and then I and then I describe what my responsibility is. So I'll say I'm facilitating the discussion. I will have uh, pre-written questions and I will get the discussion going. That is on me as a facilitator. And then it's up to you to participate and have fun. Um, ultimately, that's what I want to have uh, done in, in that book club group. So I'll put that in the body of it. And I think that's really key because as people, the dates get closer, maybe they haven't even looked in the body of that meeting invite. They will eventually look at it and they'll say, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what I can expect. And I think for, especially for newer employees that get involved, they want to know what to expect. So communicate, over communicate. That's the most important part. Okay. So now the discussion starting. Like I said, I'll get some wine, some beer, some snacks. I will write probably a page worth of discussion questions or excerpts that I really liked from the book. Inevitably, what happens is I will start it. I will get going. I will not have to go through the entire list because what happens is organically people jump in with their own points and their own thought process behind the book and they will then begin um, coming up with their own question, posing ideas from the book and everybody has their own vantage point. So I think that's the beauty of it is organically it should take its own life because if you did what I did early on, which is you have all the questions and you have to get through all the questions, then it's very rigid and it doesn't have a free flow and discussion. But over time, I think, you know, as people, the same people kind of come to expect what it is, it will take a life of its own and people will feel comfortable. I think that's the most important thing is people need to eventually feel comfortable doing it. I'll tell you this, regardless of people read it or not, the discussion is the best part. Like I said, the the whole purpose is learning, or at least from my perspective, it's learning and interacting with people you don't get a chance to interact with. And it accomplishes both. Even if you didn't read the book, going to the discussion is better than not. It's kind of like with, with a podcast. It's like, I can't read, I can't literally read every single book of every author that's on a podcast, but I can listen to the podcast and get the high points and I'm still going to learn a lot. Now, when you're in a book discussion, you've literally, I mean, in our case, we start out with like maybe 10 or so people. We have 25 people showing up for these discussions and people do talk, people do open up and you get all these different perspectives about the book and how it relates to what they're doing in their functions or in the organization. There's, I'm telling you from a development standpoint, there's nothing like it. I highly recommend you create a book club I hopefully covered everything that you can imagine or you you would want to ask about starting a book club. You got to own it. The ownership of it, uh, having a leader for the book club is probably the most important piece. The cadence of it, do not let it slip off. I think if that happens, because we've done some other programs around here where it just fell, fell off because people got busy and I'm putting air quotes up because people will say that a lot. And I'm not just trying to throw anybody under the bus. I'm just saying that this happens all the time where it just falls off and then people forget about it. So a regular cadence, having ownership, having that same voice over and over again, that same group, you're going to have success with it. So I hopefully answered any questions you'd have about launching a book club. I hope you really like this inside look at Zenium and some of the interesting things that we're doing from a culture perspective. If you like this episode, I want to hear about that. Please go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or wherever. If you're not subscribed, you got to click the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed and you haven't left us a review, would love a review. People have to know about this podcast. Uh, really excited about the content that we have coming up. And it's so good to, to have a community where uh, people are reaching out and saying, the the impact that this content is making on on their workplace and that they're they're really using this to transform their workplace that's what this podcast is all about it's about upping your game from a hr and people perspective to 
create an amazing culture. We truly want to transform workplaces. And I thank you for tuning in today. Again, go to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Give us a five-star review and reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. I love when I hear from listeners. It's fantastic. Have an amazing day. Talk to you next week.